Weber 64 present. A play toy that video review. Came back and then join the show. Hi there, welcome to another Lemon C64 play guide and review. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Tilt, released by Codemasters in 1990. From the title screen we can see a very smooth tilt moves in the centre of the screen and that gives away the style of this gameplay. So let's press fire and check this game out. In this game we play, oddly enough, as a marble and it's our job to get all the way across the marble maze to the exit. Between the marble and the exit are a number of doors and by pressing the fire button we can open those doors momentarily just as we move through those and by pulling the controller in the relevant direction we can then tilt the board and hopefully get home. After which we will gain a number of bonuses. And then we move on to the next table. There are four tables in this game and the player must complete all four tables to complete one level and there are nine levels in the game. This means there are 36 screens in the entire game. If we crash at any point, then the gates that we've managed to get through will be ticked off. And then you can see there a number of gates, which makes the return journey much easier. And so if you can get through a number of those, then the game at least makes the game more lenient from then on. Unfortunately, you can see those diagonals there. Yes, it is hard to get through those diagonals and to press the fire button exactly on the right position to open those gates. If those gates close on the ball, then unfortunately that's a life over. We have infinite lives in this game, basically we can survive as long as we have power. And we will gain power back by moving through those gates. You can see the power does increase there even when we do lose a life. So all we have to do is to get through that final gate on this second table and then that's level completed. amount of power that the player starts with on the subsequent levels really does depend on the previous level and you can see there I only gained half the amount of power I needed to make this level very much easier and that's because I died a number of times but obviously if you can complete these levels first time then you should have full power leading on to every subsequent level and that makes the job a doddle. on to the fourth table and each table is different and we will play each table once per level so this is the final table on level one. To begin it's important to aim in the direction that we want to go from the start and then by pressing fire then that will release the marble and it will continue along its journey. The marble begins at the size of a pea and it will continue to grow level by level until it gets to the size of a billiard ball. So you can imagine by level 9 trying to manipulate a billiard ball around this exact same maze is very difficult indeed. At the moment we are just about surviving. Well, we are trying to survive and that means we've only three more gates to get through and we can run out of power but luckily it does give us bonus emergency power at the end. So even if we lose all the power to continue, we'll move on to the emergency backup supply. That's level 1 completed, let's move on to level 2.
On level two, it introduces the player to a new trap, and that is the light gate. Mm. By moving left and right there, we can open and close that light gate, and as long as the light is not on when we move over that, then we can progress, and if the light is on, unfortunately we'll crash into that, so the player will have to waggle left and right very quickly to turn that light off, and that will get them through that particular hazard. Because the first table is very easy, we've managed to gain the power that we need to progress through the next three tables. So now our marble has increased in size now that we're on level 2 and it has also increased in speed as well. And you can see more of those light traps blocking our way. At the beginning they don't start off very hard but unfortunately the timing still has to be maintained otherwise you'll get nowhere. This game was coded by Stephen Walters who also created the incredible 3D pinball and the Mastertronic label and he also created 3D Pool and 3D Snooker. The music in Tilt is credited to Steve Barrett, who also created a huge rake of Codemasters themes including the Fantasy World and Magic Land Dizzy themes on the Commodore 64 and he also created the music for Super Hang On and games like Pro Ski Simulator. I have to say the play environment is very very smooth indeed, in fact the professional quality of this game really shines through and really gets to the player. Everything about this game is very smoothly and professionally polished and anyone who thought 3D was kind of slow on the Commodore 64 really needs to take a look at this game. There aren't too many marble maze simulators around but for its day this was kind of the super monkey ball deluxe of this era. So if Hawkeye was Doom and Action Biker was kind of a forerunner to GTA then this probably went on to inspire games just like Super Monkey Ball. You can see these mazes are very very quick and they require dexterity and if the player doesn't have those fast reflexes then they will be struggling and you can see the power there only just gives us enough power to get through onto the next table and luckily the next table is table one because we've just completed another level. Whenever we complete a level we will always gain full power back. Now our marble gets just that little bit bigger and there are more light traps you can see on the floor. Unfortunately there are only two types of trap, the light trap and the doors you can see there and they frequent the entire game. Even on the later levels you won't find it too much harder, you'll just find more light traps in the way ball may be slightly larger, maybe slightly faster. I think even though there are only four tables in this game, which is slightly a shame, and um, we'll have to play all of those four tables over and over and over again, and I feel there is slightly less variety in the number of traps than I would have anticipated but the playability is immaculate, the controls are terrific and responsive, the graphics flow very very smoothly indeed and are just about colourful enough to 
flash out the game and you can see the 3D has been put to amazingly great effect with this game and even the tremendous sound effects really helped to give the player an experience. Again, I wish these mazes were just a little larger maybe, just maybe even more variety, but the ones that we have on offer are great and they certainly aren't a pushover. So even at this stage, the player can trip over the same doors that they tripped over on level one if they don't have the great fire button skills and the reactions to match. It's also a great satisfying sound and an effect when we get through that final hole there in the floor and it gives us virtually full power back. So you can see the score is really racking up there and it is possible with careful play to really get far in this game and maybe it will take quite some time to complete the game this is just the preview of the first three levels out of the nine so it will take the player quite some time particularly with stunts like that the only thing you can possibly do at this stage is to have a clean run because that power does move down pretty quickly and it doesn't really give you too much power restored when you complete the level so if you can complete that first time it will give us full power and at this stage the player really does have to be on the ball first time because the energy isn't very lenient and you certainly cannot collect extra energy or have bonus power-ups and tokens and just like that you can see certain elements of the maze aren't actually used and there are big gaps there in the corners where they could have plotted extra elements and i don't think that really spoils the game the only thing that spoils the game is the frustration which comes when the player collides with the scenery when they thought they were on target or they just roll over there by one pixel and then that's life over but even at this stage we can still continue as long as we get through those barriers that will give us some much needed power moving on to the scores zap gave this game 74 percent in october 1990 the current lemon 64 score is 79 percent your commodore gave this game 80 percent and commodore format gave this 93 percent gives this an average rating of 8 out of 10. So thank you once again for joining me and checking out another Commodore 64 play guide and review. Hope to see you again soon and in the meantime thank you.